In the name of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to welcome all of you to Lewinsville's online worshiping community for All Saints Sunday, November the 1st, 2020. We are so glad to have you joining us, whether you are joining us online at lewinsville.org, watching this service on YouTube, or listening to the audio version of this service on your phone. We are especially glad to have those of you who are joining us for worship today for the first time. We are particularly honored to have you with us in our online worshiping community. Today's All Saints Sunday service involves the celebration of communion, so you are invited to gather together the elements for communion, bread and wine, juice and crackers, so that you will have them nearby when that time comes in the worship service. A bulletin for this service of worship is available for download on the church's website at lewinsville.org if you'd like to download that and follow along. Friends, wherever you have come from and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome here at Lewinsville Presbyterian Church. Let us now worship the Lord. Saints of Lewinsville Presbyterian Church, let us join our hearts in a time of prayer. Blessed are you, O God, for you are holy, gracious, and good, the hope of all the faithful. Empower the meek and encourage the poor. Comfort those who mourn and fill humble hearts with gladness. Give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, peace to the peacemakers, 
mercy to the merciful, and honor to the despised. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess, Lord, that we can be indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way, joined with those from ages past who have served you with faith, hope, and love. Sustain your saints in ministry until at last they see their reward, the joy of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I want to invite the children to come up close by the TV screen or the computer for the time with children and the children's message. Today is a day in the church year that we call All Saints Sunday. And All Saints Sunday is a day when we remember those who have died, those in our church who have died, those in our families who have died, and so I'm out here for part of the service uh, today. I'm out here in the Lewinsville Church Cemetery. Now, some people in our world think of cemeteries as kind of strange or even scary places, but we in the church don't think of them that way at all um, because we in the church know that cemeteries are where people are buried who have been loved so much by their families, people that we have loved, people who have been loved by their families, it's where they are buried. And so because of that, there is a real beauty uh, to cemeteries because of all of the love that is represented here. Also, cemeteries are one of the main places where we remember the promises of Easter. The promises that Jesus Christ has overcome sin and death, and therefore we do not need to be afraid of anyone or anything anymore. So cemeteries are places of beauty. They're also places of deep joy, as well as being places of sadness because of the loved ones that we miss. 
Now, I wonder if some of you have had loved ones who have died, maybe in your families, or if you've heard your families talk about people um, who have died. And that can be really, really sad because of how much we love them and how much we miss them and wish that they were still here. But it is also still the case that on All Saints Sunday and for the rest of the year, we remember that God's power and God's love are stronger than anything else in the whole universe, including death. And so therefore, we don't need to be afraid. So on All Saints Sunday, and this can carry forward through the rest of the year, we can be both sad at missing our loved ones who have died, but also filled with a deeper joy in the power and the love of God. Why don't we bow our heads now and say a prayer. Almighty and loving God, on this All Saints Sunday, we give you thanks and we give you praise for our loved ones who have died. We ask that you would hold them very close to you and your grace and your heart, and that you would surround us with comfort, with strength, and with hope. Help us to both experience the sadness of missing them but also the deep joy in knowing that your love is stronger than anything. All of these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God of all holiness, great is the multitude and rich is the diversity of those you have assembled in our community. Pattern our lives on the blessedness that Jesus taught. Form us according to Christ's teaching that we may aid others so that all may stand in the joy of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Listen for the word of God. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. The Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. On this day, O God, we give you thanks for our ancestors in the faith who have run their race and kept the faith. Let their example be unto us a source of strength and guidance, and let your grace turn our hearts more and more and more to your kingdom of righteousness and of love. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On All Saints Sunday, the church around the world gathers together to remind ourselves that we are part of what the creed calls the communion of saints. We are part of an inclusive global fellowship that stretches across space and across time, across and beyond every border where our shared ultimate allegiance is not to any empire or nation state, but to Jesus Christ, our King. This is the fellowship that is envisioned in Revelation chapter 7, the first text that Linda read for us today. After this I looked, John says, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb. This fellowship of the King, this innumerable, diverse, beautiful assembly, according to verse 14 in chapter 7, is made of those who have come out of the great ordeal or tribulation, those who have been brought through the trials and the temptations and the sufferings of the world. And when the text says that they have come out of the ordeal, that is a nod to the work that God has been doing ever since the Exodus, leading people out of bondage, setting people free. And as in the Exodus from Egypt, this great fellowship has been brought out through the blood of a lamb. In the first exodus, it was the blood of a lamb that protected the Hebrew slaves in the Passover. Here in Revelation 7, the blood of the Lamb of God, the crucified Christ, the death and the resurrection of Jesus have washed their robes and undone all of the powers of death. We are part of that great fellowship, that great communion of saints across every dividing line of tribe, nation, ideology, language, race, political party, and any of the other human constructs that we cherish so much. Now, this is a rather odd text, and All Saints Sunday is a rather odd celebration for the Sunday of Election Week, in which there is so much energy and so much anxiety being poured into the elections in our country. And we remember that in our reform tradition of faith, participating in the political process is not just a civic responsibility, it is a religious responsibility. Our tradition encourages people to vote, to advocate, to run for office, to get involved for the common good and for the love of neighbor. God's sovereign spirit works through all things including our messy 
political process. But it is also true that Jesus and his cross summon us to a different way than the ways of the world, to a politics of love, to an engagement with our neighbor that, as we have suggested before, engagement with our neighbor that has two key foci on the neighborly horizontal plane of our faith. Love for the vulnerable poor, those who are often referred to in biblical idiom as the widow, the orphan, and the stranger, and love for the enemy and the opponent. When Jesus says, you will always have the poor with you, Jesus is assuming that his followers will always live in close proximity to the poor so that his followers can seek their well-being. And when Jesus tells his disciples to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, Jesus is asking his students to learn from him, to follow him as he engages those who opposed him and engages them not merely with tolerance or uh, resignation, but engages those who opposed him with open, broken-hearted love for them. This calling of the church, love for the vulnerable and love for the opponent, this calling of the church is going to be very important in the days to come. It is not news that we are living through a time of intense polarization and animosity. And it remains the case that we will get through this. We will get through these days together. In this, as in other serious relationships, such as a marriage, we may say that our great work is twofold. One is to speak our minds as clearly and as non-threateningly as possible, and two is to listen to the voices of others as openly and as non-defensively as possible, to be honest and upfront about our own convictions, and to listen for understanding to the convictions of others. Now, it can be hard for a lot of us to do either one of these very well. When we articulate our own convictions, we can often end up doing it anxiously and in a threatening way. And when we listen to the convictions of others, we can often end up doing that anxiously as well with brittle defensiveness. This is tough work. In the weeks to come, following the election, the session here at Lewinsville has affirmed an initiative of the Faith and Public Policy Committee to gather folks from the congregation on Zoom for a series of events sponsored by Braver Angels. And the series of events is titled, With Malice, towards none. The first of these with malice towards none events is going to be held on Saturday, November the 21st. And that one will be separate gatherings for those who are pleased with the outcome of the election and those who are distressed by the outcome of the election. Then there will be a follow-up event later in January for the groups to meet together with an eye towards learning and understanding each other as we seek to live and work and serve together. More information will be coming out about this series and we encourage you to participate. Loving the poor and loving the opponent the enemy, were core aspects of the way of discipleship in Jesus' day. They are core aspects of our time now, before the election, 
and they will be core aspects of our ministry after the election. Lewinsville's purpose continues to be to love and serve God by responding to human need. And it remains my conviction that when we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the cross, and the well-being of the poor and the vulnerable, we will come out about where we need to as a church. We will undoubtedly disagree about exactly what those things mean, Jesus, the cross, the well-being of the vulnerable and the poor. We will undoubtedly disagree about what those things mean and how to go about doing them, but they will help us to be asking the right questions. On All Saints Sunday, then, we remember those from our congregation who have died during this past year, those who served faithfully, joyfully, with humor and compassion and commitment alongside of us and in front of us. Bob Alden, Alice Johnston, Hazel Billy Heemstra, Dwayne McKenna, Betty Palmer, Sylvia Van Vordhuizen, Michael Werner. Each of you may be remembering others who have died in the last year and in years past. I know I am. Many of these losses are still fresh and raw. And the grief that we feel over these losses is a testimony to the impact that these saints have had on us and the love that we had for them. We dare not try to shut down our hearts so that we will not have to feel that kind of grief because God is present in our grief and God is able to use our grief in some mysterious way for our own healing and for the healing of the nations and of the world. That is the paradoxical power and the paradoxical beauty of God's blessing. God's blessing is not about making things come out the way we want. God's blessing is about the redemption and the healing of the world, leading thirsty sheep to the springs of the waters of life, wiping away the tears from the eyes of those who are weeping with grief, comforting those who mourn, filling those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, giving mercy, providing strength to those who are being persecuted for righteousness sake, and leading us deeper and deeper and deeper into a life of humility and a life of love. Now, that may not be what the world has in mind when the world thinks of a blessed life. The world may assume that being blessed means being number one and having more toys than anyone else. But Jesus is after a much bigger purpose than that. Jesus is on a mission to heal the nations, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to make all things and all people new. And friends, you and I, we get to be a part of that mission. To God and to God alone be all of the glory, honor, and praise now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Surround us and fill us, O God, as individuals, as a congregation, as a nation, and as your world. Surround us and fill us with your grace. Show us how you want us to live so that our lives may give you glory. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us join our voices with saints across the ages as we proclaim our faith using the words of the traditional Apostles' Creed. 
and let us say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, we want to welcome all of you who are joining us for worship on this All Saints Sunday, November the 1st, 2020. There are a number of announcements about the mission and ministry of the congregation that I want to share with you at this time. Today, we began a new four-week module of adult education with a class here at Lewinsville, a class that I am leading that is entitled New Testament 101. This is an introduction, an overview of the New Testament. It does not require any prior knowledge of the New Testament. If you missed today's class, I hope you'll join us next week for the class. Beginning this coming Saturday, November the 7th, the Reformed Institute is offering a short three-week class over Zoom that is entitled Biblical Justice and Christian Formation. That three-week class on Saturdays will feature presentations and discussions by Professor Michael Barham about his book that is entitled Missional Economics, Biblical Justice and Christian Formation. You can sign up for that class at the Reformed Institute's website at reformedinstitute.org. Next Sunday, November the 8th, we will be offering a dual afternoon offering of a hoops activity for children and youth, as well as the November sunset service. Both of those will be taking place at 3.30 p.m. on opposite sides of the church building. Our hope is that this may make it possible for parents who want to come to the sunset service to do so. The sunset service will be taking place in the small parking lot off of Great Falls Street. Again, that's a hoops activity for children and youth and the sunset service for November, next Sunday, November the 8th at 3.30 p.m. As part of our commemoration of All Saints Sunday today, we are planning special afternoon activities for this afternoon. Weather permitting, and I'm recording this on Saturday, Weather permitting, we will have an outdoor time of music and contemplation in the gardens at the Lewinsville, formerly known as the Peters Green, at 3 o'clock. That time of music will be followed by an outdoor Teze worship service in the same location in the gardens at the Lewinsville at 4.15 p.m. We need you to register for these events on the church's website at lewinsville.org by clicking the button in the upcoming events section of the homepage, the button for the All Saints Time of Remembrance and Teze Worship. Masks will be required for those services. In the event of inclement weather this afternoon, which does look to be a possibility, we will not be having the three o'clock time of music and we will have the 415 Teze worship service on Zoom. Information will be posted on the church's website by one o'clock this afternoon and so we um, encourage you to check the website for the latest information about those. On Sunday, November the 15th, two weeks from today, at noon, following the morning worship service for that day, we will be having the annual meeting for the Lewinsville Retirement Residence, LRR. We will be having that annual meeting over Zoom on that day. A link for that annual meeting will be made available to you and all members of the Lewinsville congregation who by virtue of your membership in the church are part of the corporation for the Lewinsville Retirement Residence, you are all invited to attend and participate in that meeting. 
want to remind you that the church's nominating committee is inviting your suggestions of people to serve as officers here in the congregation at Lewinsville. A form is available in the online bulletin for today. You can fill that out and email it back or you can return it through the church's website. We friends, we continue to be so very, very grateful to you for your ongoing and sustained financial support of the mission and ministry here at Lewinsville. The simplest way for you to give to the church is through the website at lewinsville.org by clicking the blue Give Online button. You can also mail in your offering check and it'll be processed as soon as possible. Online is also the easiest way for you to make your pledge towards next year's mission and ministry of the congregation by clicking the Make a Pledge Online button that can be found on the home page of the website. Many of you have already made your pledges towards our mission and ministry in 2021, and we are so very grateful to you for doing that. If you have not yet made your pledge, we would love for you to do so. If you have any questions about the stewardship campaign this year, we would invite you to reach out either to me or to Elder Dave Gunter, who is the chair of the stewardship committee. Because today is the first Sunday of the month, we are collecting the Deacon's Fund here at Lewinsville. The Deacon's Fund is used to provide limited emergency relief to people who are in financial need and undergoing financial distress. You can contribute to the Deacon's Fund here at Lewinsville by clicking the Give Online button as well. Your support for that fund is most appreciated and has been very, very helpful um, to us in our ministry. Immediately after worship today, uh, we are going to be having another Zoom coffee hour. A link to that Zoom coffee hour was in the Thursday update this past week and in the reminder email this morning about this worship service. The flowers in our sanctuary today are given to the glory of God by Lisa Greenfield in loving memory of their mothers and grandmothers, Marianne Greenfield and Margaret and Rita Notaft. We join with Lisa and the Greenfield Notaft family in thanking God for their lives and for their impact on so many others. Friends, let us now continue our worship of Almighty God during this time of offering.
now to the time of the prayers of the people I want to share an update on Andy Collins he is the young man whose family is serving as missionaries in Thailand who had a severe bike accident and he had surgery on his spine a couple days ago that went well and his lung is stabilized but we continue to pray for him in his recovery and I want to share um, about the death from COVID-19 of Glenn Bannerman a Presbyterian certified church educator and professor who was part of the formation of both Pastor Scott and Allison, and um, who died just a day or so ago. On a day when we remember all saints, we call to mind in prayer those who, along with the Glenn Bannermans of the world, formed our own faith. This time of prayer is just a few days before the election, and I know that we are holding space in our hearts and times of prayer for our country as we think through what the next days will look like after the election and how it is that we might be voices for peace and process and as we might consider how it is that we follow our faith in Jesus Christ, um, how we do that in our voting, how we do that in how we see people who might vote differently than we do and how we see it in ways that we can knowing that it's really the power of God that needs to be at work here. Um, start to bring some healing to such a divided time in our country. So now let us join our hearts and our prayers in this time. Let us pray. Lord, all the saints sing your praise, worship you with gladness, and pray without ceasing before your throne. In gratitude for their witness and in thanksgiving that you also call us children of God, we come in a long line of saints seeking your will. You tell us that the poor in spirit are blessed. While we often seek fleeting riches and worldly status, you remind us that those whose focus is on you, those who seek to serve, and the least of these, are the ones who know your blessing. When we struggle to find our way to you, turn us toward the poor and the poor in spirit in order that we may be found in and with you. You say, Lord, that those who mourn are blessed, and in this time of pandemic and economic upheaval, natural disasters and human inflicted violence, there are many of your children in mourning. Comfort them in their distress and relieve their suffering. You name blessed those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and in a time when injustice is unmasked on every corner and earthly powers exploit and abuse, make us feel hunger pangs for righteousness. The meek, the merciful, the pure in heart. While the world overlooks and ignores them, you, Lord, proclaim them blessed. Knowing these divine truths, 
quiet our cynicism that labels this kind of kingdom living as unrealistic in today's world. Bring to mind saints who also lived in the real world and who formed our faith and modeled a life in tune with the words of Jesus. As we are days before the election, call us to prayer to keep us in your presence and the study of scripture to keep our feet on your path. What saints have been doing across the ages. As we vote and wait and pray, may we follow Jesus Christ so closely that we cannot help but see him everywhere and in all people. You have surrounded us, Lord, with a great cloud of witnesses, faithful people in every age, strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship. May we run with perseverance the race that is set before us and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we do so to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather now for communion, we want again to invite you to gather together the elements of communion for your celebration at home the bread and wine, juice and crackers, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. On All Saints Sunday, we are reminded that we are part of the communion of saints, a fellowship of the faithful across space and across time with the faithful who have come before us in this place and around the world. So we wanted to begin this time of communion here today in the Lewinsville Church Cemetery, where we are surrounded by the markers of those who have come before us. Many of you have loved ones who are buried here. We are joining them and they are joining us in the great global fellowship that is described in Revelation chapter 7, the fellowship that gathers together in praise before God and before the Lamb. It is a fellowship of great tenderness, great love, and a deep and abiding joy that the world cannot take away. Our Lord Jesus invites all of you who want to know the Lord more fully, love the Lord more deeply, and follow the Lord more devotedly to share in this meal that has been prepared especially for you. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you who have died this year. Bob Alden. Hazel Billy Heemstra. Alice Johnston. Dwayne McKenna. Betty Palmer. Sylvia Van Vortizen, Michael Warner, friends and family known to each of us here today. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of the ages, we praise you for all of your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. 
for apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place, who in life and death have witnessed to your truth, we praise you, O God. For all your servants who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely, and died in faith, who still are shining lights in the world, we praise you, O God. For those no longer remembered, who earnestly sought you in darkness, who held fast their faith in trial, and served others, we praise you, O God. From every race and tongue, from every people and nation, you have gathered them into your kingdom. You have shown them the path of life and filled them with the joy of your presence. How glorious is your heavenly realm, where the multitude of your saints rejoice with Christ. And so renew our communion with all of your saints, especially those whom we name before you who have died this year. Joining with the saints, with all the faithful of every time and place, we proclaim your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we praise you, most holy God, for sending your only Son to li live among us, sharing our joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend to sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and is risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. And we trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. As you raised our Lord from death and call us with him from death to life, we give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and grateful praise. For great is the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us in these your gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, draw us together into one body and join us to Christ the Lord, that we may remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. And so it was on the night of his betrayal that Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant shed for you through my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And now, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Having received the gifts of this table at your table or wherever it is that you are serving communion, partaking in communion today, let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your people in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in loving God and neighbor, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen.
friends of Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, we have been called to faith at this precious moment in history. You and I have the high privilege of being part of God's redeeming and healing work in our world. In our time of polarization and uncertainty and anxiety, God's Holy Spirit is profoundly at work. God's Spirit is at work for the healing of the nations, building the kingdom of righteousness and understanding, justice and love, and leading all people into God's future. And we get to be part of that. Our Lord Jesus walks with us into this important work, this mission, and Jesus will never, ever leave us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God Almighty, and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all at every moment throughout the rest of our lives and out into all eternity. Amen. Thank you.